Right, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, and welcome to the Hartford Astronomy Group AGM. Um, just to let you know, this is being recorded, so if you don't want to be seen or heard, then uh, unplug everything and uh, take the appropriate action. You may find that you will, um, if you pick the speaker view option, which is one of those um, under a little grid at the top there somewhere. You'll find that the person speaking should dominate the screen. And when we change over to different people during the meeting, it all uh, should go to them as well. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 12th AGM of the Hartford Astronomy Group. Um, at the bottom, there is the chat tab as well. You can use that to send messages along and uh, you can talk to individual people by clicking on them and chatting to them as well if you don't want uh, other people to see things. It's a good way to send messages in though, uh, or questions as the evening progresses. So, agendas, um, and copies of accounts have been circulated. So I hope you've all had them and I hope you've all read them uh, thoroughly. And the first thing is apologies for absence. So if we've got any apologies for absence, uh, perhaps you could uh, send them to Simon. This first item after apologies is to receive and approve the minutes of last year's meeting that we held at the fairway uh, suite at the Pans Hanger Golf Course on the 8th of May. So is there anybody who feels that that wasn't a true reflection of the meeting they came along? If you remember it probably lasted about 10 minutes and we belted through at a rate of knots. So if anybody has objection to anything in the minutes, perhaps you could type a message on there and we'll take note of it. And matters arising. I don't think there's anything particular matters arising that I can think of that will not be covered later on in the meeting. But if anybody does have any other matters arising that are not, or perhaps you want to wait to the end and you could see them or ask in any other business if something doesn't turn up. Okay. Well, no messages have come up unless somebody is writing a very long one. I'm going to move on. Okay, the chairman's report then. Um, it's great that the club continues to flourish and grow both numbers, members, events in which we're participating. We had a very full year of talks and activities in a variety of locations around the county. The society's main activities are still the monthly meetings or uh, we're struggling on to get them, we're still doing it, held on the second Wednesdays of each month from September to June. Ever-increasing number of meetings of HAGAS, the Hartford Astronomy Group Astrophotography Section, and the club participates in many outreach activities such as cubs, brownies, rainbows, guides, and scouts. We have also advised schools about running astronomy events. This one has been a year of forging strong links with the University of Hertfordshire. We've been pleased that the university has been able to hold its open evening for the public once more under the guidance of Professor Ben Birmingham. The university has had some difficulty in filling the vacancy of outreach officer but we are pleased that Nula O'Flynn, and forgive me if I pronounce that incorrectly, um, has been appointed and is keen to work with us. We've been welcomed to the open evenings and are now being seen as a vital part of them, being asked to give demonstrations, displays, talks and quizzes to the visitors. We thank all the volunteers who come along to give us support at these evenings by bringing their telescopes, their books, astronomy artifacts, and most importantly, 
their enthusiasm. I had said at the last meeting that we had some exciting news to share with you. Well, here's the first bit. At last year's AGM, we had mentioned the consideration of establishing our own observatory. We had a look at a site in Wheat Hampstead as a possible location, and we also approached the university basically to ask if there, any of their domes at Bayfordbury were going spare. Although there weren't any spare domes, there was quite an interest in our project, and Professor Ben would like to work with us under their outreach program to see how we can work together. He is enthusiastic about us being on the site and he is determined to take on and overcome any objections that might be raised from the various management areas. Apparently there has been a precedent for a non-university building on the site in the past and this is a strong lever to help us progress. We're very much in the initial stages of this project and I'm sure that you will appreciate that other factors have since come into play that will make this project less of a priority for the university until the current situation regarding their ability to fulfill their functions in the teaching and learning areas is much clearer. Similarly, the Institute of Physics talks arranged by Diane Cran and Alan Davis for the Institute of Physics, uh, they tell us that their evenings would not be the same without our presence. We set up publicly uh, displays at the university and the main college site in college, at the main college site in College Lane in Hatfield. We hope that they will be able to resume their talks pretty soon. So the programme, with regard to the programme, it's been a very successful year. The evidence being the fact that we've had around about 70 plus people at the meetings. We naturally assume that this has been down to our excellent visiting speakers who've covered a wide range of topics on astronomy and space exploration. But to tell you more about those, we've got Jerry. So we've um, been celebrating um, this year the, uh, the 200th anniversary of the Royal Astronomical Society. Um, we've got quite a way to go to that, but maybe when we do, they'll make some stamps for us as well. We've also unfortunately had losses, um, but one thing, that has continued has been the Sky at Night, which has recently celebrated its 800th episode, though in a rather different version in view of the current circumstances. However, Hag was already ahead of the game, having listed 10 astronomical activities that you can do during lockdown. So thank you to all of those who contributed ideas for that. Now let's go back to the start of our program, um, back in uh, September, uh, where we were, of course, like at the Howard Centre. Um, sadly, I wasn't with you because that was um, not that long after uh, I got incarcerated in the little hospital. Uh, less said about that, the better. But uh, at least I was there for our first meeting uh, by tradition now given by our president Roger O'Brien who took us out beyond Neptune. Then in October Martin and Steve gave us an introduction to astrophotography to help encourage more and more people to take up this aspect of astronomy and uh, little did we know how useful that was going to be. Um, in November, we got together for the transit of Mercury, mm -hmm. and uh, there we are out at Wafordbury 
and uh, watching it through various forms of equipment. And there's a little, uh, well, it's a two frame GIF down the bottom right from Steve showing the movement of Mercury across the sun's disk. We were also at Bay for a number of times for helping out at their open evenings, as Alan has already mentioned. And there you can see Alan running uh, one of his great quizzes in the lecture room. Uh, there's our display in the, the main room and some youngsters looking through telescopes, both those of the observatory and those taken along by our members. And thank you all again, those of you who do that. Um, and if you simply just come along to see how you can help, really, all of your assistance is really gratefully um, acknowledged. It's most welcome and makes the evening great success. Now in November, for our main meeting, we welcome back Joe Colin Stewart, talked about his latest book, and then Nick Jovanic took us on the next steps in astrophotography, and I'll be mentioning him again a little later. Then we were delighted to have the directory of University College London Observatory at Mill Hill come along to talk about the observatory and its work. Now the idea was that in March we would follow that up with a visit to the observatory. That obviously is completely impossible at the moment. But we hope when we come back to having dark skies again in the autumn that we'll be able to reschedule that. So that is a question of watch this space. Carl Murray, one of the principal investigators on the Cassini uh, mission, came to talk about the end of the, uh, the, the flight as Cassini plunged into the atmosphere of Saturn. And speaking of plunging things through the atmosphere, Stuart Eves talked about the threat of uh, near-Earth objects and told us how astronomers can save the world. I'm hmm. really jealous. Uh, uh, that is such a fantastic title. You just can't turn that down, can you? Well, in April, I was going to cover the 50th anniversary of Apollo 13, but uh, we weren't able to hold a meeting for the first time in, what, 15 years. Dear, oh dear. Um, but as we're doing now through the magic of the internet, on May the 13th, we had our first online meeting and I gave an update on space exploration. And you should all know that that vehicle, or rather at least that type of vehicle that you can see, <coughs> is about to launch in just over one hour from now when America will return astronauts into space from American soil for the first time since 2011. So we hope to be able to stream that to you. Otherwise, just go on the internet and look for NASA TV, as uh, Steve has already done. Thank you. So, uh, that meeting then uh, had Alan Martin giving a, a, a preview of the night sky and I talked about what America was doing to, um, to continue to explore space. So that replaced our normal May meeting, which was going to be about um, radio astronomy, something which not really easily done over um, a virtual meeting. So June would have been Paul Money, but uh, 
for various reasons, he's no longer able to, to do that. Um, instead, we have already arranged for Mary McIntyre to do an online meeting for us. She came to Haggas uh, a few months ago and we were delighted with her presentation. It was really exciting. We all enjoyed it. I think there were about 24 people there, wasn't that? About the highest number we've had at a Haggis meeting, if not ever, then certainly for some time. So she's coming back on the 24th and uh, Mary McIntyre .co.uk if you want to go have a look at uh, some of her images. Now that's set up for June the 24th however Stock Press had a phone call from Martin just earlier this evening to say that Nick Germanic has said yes he will be very happy to talk to us again and in particular, he's being involved in uh, long distance astronomy by using remote telescopes. And he's going to talk about that. Uh, so that's very exciting. We're looking forward to that. And uh, we're suggesting that that will be on the date of our standard uh, June meeting which will be Wednesday the 10th of June. More information about that in due course. Apart from that we hope by the autumn that the Bayford reopen evenings will restart and we'll be taking part in those. We'll have our visit to Mill Hill. We'd also like to visit Airbus Defence and Space Sadly, uh, it'll be too late to see the uh, Rosalind Franklin Mars rover as that's now been shipped out to France and would have been awaiting launch to Mars this summer. However, that has been unfortunately delayed and it's net, which means it can't go for another two years. I think it's unlikely that they'll bring it back to Stevenage. But even if we can't see that, then there's lots of other exciting things. So if anyone has actually been to Airbus, you'll know that uh, they do an amazing tour. They build some of the world's biggest and most advanced satellites and space probes. So certainly not to be missed. Uh, we also hope to run another My Telescope Doesn't Work session in the autumn and of course we'll continue with our meetings and Haggis meetings and as well as our normal meetings or I should say as well as our monthly meetings which would normally stop in June. We wouldn't normally meet in July and August but uh, we're looking to see uh, about additional activities and uh, Alan may want to say something about uh, um, speakers or well, let's just say from further afield and I'll leave him leave it to him to say any more than that. So uh, that's it I hope you've been enjoying our program. I hope you'll continue to enjoy our activities and of course if any of you have any um, all right, let's come back to that. If any of you have any ideas for activities, speakers, um, then please drop me a line at program heartsastro or UK and I'll uh, be very happy to hear from you. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Jerry. Um, <laughs> a very full programme and uh, we do very much appreciate you, uh, all the hard work that goes into getting all these speakers to come along. 
there's no doubt about it, the quality of them is, is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that now if we move on a little bit further in, into the head teacher's report. Um, we now talk about the astrophotography group who uh, have had some tremendous success this year. Uh, how Yes. Now, for those of you who don't know what HAGAS is, it's the astrophotography side of the Hartford Astronomy Group. And uh, we've been running now for about five years. And we've had some pretty good nights, actually. And we've also, uh, sorry, last year we had two visits from George Sallet. Uh, one was uh, particularly about cameras, and the other one was about processing and various other aspects of it. Uh, we also had Mary, I arranged with Mary McIntyre to come to us in uh, February and uh, she turned up and she gave us a very, very good um, uh, presentation. Also, we have to thank her because she also supplied us with a load of PDFs uh, which can be used by club members. Now, we double checked this with her to make sure because we didn't want to be seen to passing these around. Uh, and then she gets word of it, but she's very, very happy and uh, is uh, very, very willing for anybody to, to see those PDFs. Uh, I've also arranged for her, although Jerry's tried to, to rob it, uh, for her to come in on the uh, 24th of uh, June, and uh, she will be doing a presentation over the internet. Now, that will be available to uh, everybody, uh, not just those in, in Haggis because uh, we feel that uh, what Mary has to say and the fact that she's putting up these uh, images, uh, we think we should, uh, that should be open to uh, everybody uh, in, in the club. Uh, for those of you who don't know, four of us went off to EI again last September and came back in, in October, but we weren't there for two months, it was only 10 days. And uh, we had uh, a good time and we also did some work out there. Uh, so uh, I think some of those images uh, have been seen and will be seen over the, the, the next year or so. In fact, I think Martin's been working on a few of them to improve it from, uh, from what he saw. So that in a nutshell is my little report. Okay, well thank you very I much. I shall now mute myself. <laughs> Dennis, can I ask something please? Just a question. Um, the 24th of May, the Mary McIntyre meeting, that's at Hoddesdon, yes? Uh, no, the 24th of June. At no, June. it won't be. It's an internet. It's going to be done over the internet. Of course, So yeah. you, you'll be getting an invitation. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah? Yep, great. Okay. Okay, thank you very much indeed there um, for all the hard work and brilliant photography work that's been going on with the group. It's, it's a real feather in the cap to the group that we've got this little branch who are doing such tremendous work there. Okay then, um, membership. As the club keeps growing, so does the administration. Um, Tony has done a terrific job keeping an eye on everybody with the barcode scanner um, to get people in and out of the buildings. Uh, efficiently and it's absolutely terrific that we can keep an eye on the people you know the groups of people that we get coming along if I tell you that we've got a hundred and twenty five fully paid up members that's fantastic um, 11 committee members also fully paid up 18 junior members and um, they can come along free of charge um, We've got four life members, previous chairpersons, who can come along to meetings on a free of charge basis. We've had 92 guest registrations. They're people who've attended at least one meeting as a guest this year and paid uh, the meeting fee of £3.50. Total registered membership, 250 people. I think when you realise we came from a group of about six to get up to that, um, well done everybody. Equipment. Well, despite what we said last year, we've actually acquired some new equipment this year. We've had a couple of donations which were frankly too good to turn away. First one is a Celestron 
127 Mac Cassegrain go to telescope set that was kindly donated to us by Hans Petri, who was returning to his home country of Holland and wanted to find a good home for the telescope. It's a lovely bit of kit. If anyone wants to borrow it, do come and have a word with Steve or myself and we will arrange for that. Then we had Rob Manser. He kindly donated a Mead LX200 light switch telescope in the autumn. Now, if that's not um, something that rings a bell with you, hearing those names, first of all, Mead ought to. The LX200 light switch telescope is one of these all singing, all dancing, GPS, supposed to do everything. Switch it on and it sorts itself out. I must say, actually, I had a go with it. And I know I live, I live in an area with a lot of trees and so on, so my views are a bit obscured. But quite frankly, after an hour, the telescope didn't seem to find anything, even though I could quite clearly see um, Capella and Venus. Um, and after the end of that hour, the battery had gone flat. So there is something to be said for those telescopes that you know, most of us have got that you just point and look through. But I'm sure it's a case of, getting used to what it should be able to do. It's a super bit of kit, I am sure. I think Dennis actually um, also suffered some of its frustrations when he took it on holiday with him. <laughs> A thumbs up there. Okay, so uh, lovely bits of kit. They're doing no good sitting in a garage, gathering dust. If people want to borrow them, ask. Finances. Okay, well that well tended by our treasurer Anne and she's got a star spot coming up in a moment so uh, I won't say any more about that and you can save all your questions for her about the money. Administration. Well Simon Poley, he's our secretary, secretary to the group, he prepares the agendas, the minutes for the committee meetings and gets them all out as necessary. Uh, normally he does. I mean last year he bunked off the AGM so this is my opportunity to say thank you to Terry who took the notes for last year's one but we're going to make Simon stay in at playtime and write them out neatly this year. Uh, so we're thanking Simon for all his work there and um, thank Terry for doing last year's minutes. I would also like to thank the other committee members Leon, Terry, Dennis, Danny, um, because they come along to so many of the events that we organise, they offer support um, throughout the, the year at meetings we have, and they offer a huge amount of common sense to everything that we're discussing there. Terry prepares the monthly guide for things to look for in the sky. Um, that's updated on the website under Terry's Sky Notes. And Dennis is instrumental with his support, especially to Haggas which was his original idea. And of course, we're going to say thank you to Frank, Frank Ferguson, um, chairman and uh, one of the founder members of the group who still keeps in touch with us. And, uh, you know, it's lovely to see that he's been able to make it to tonight's meeting. Pressing on. Uh, the venue. Okay, um, on the whole, we've been very pleased with it. With one or two hitches, but they're always very grateful. However, for the future, we can see two problems are manifest or will manifest themselves that are going to make continued use of the view unsatisfactory. The first is that we are outgrowing the room. It's becoming less comfortable as our numbers continue to grow. And the second is that of social distancing. Our demographic is one of, let's say, um, slightly more mature members who are more at risk of infection from the COVID-19 virus. Zoom will hopefully allow us to continue while we're not meeting as a physical group. However, we expect that eventually we will be able to meet up once more, but we'll appreciate a bit of room around us. Now we come to the second of the exciting pieces of news that I can share with you. Because of our special relationship with the university, Dr. Ben Burningham. I did read that, thanks ever so much. <laughs> Dr. Ben Burningham has informed us that we should be able to use some of the facilities 
at the College Road site for our meetings. We we're initially talking about the Lindop building, the building where the IOP talks are held as being a likely venue. We estimate that the Lindop building has accommodation for about 250 people, which should see us secure for a while yet. It's got excellent AV facilities and a good meeting area. There's plenty of free car parking. The downside is that the observing facilities are not good, but there are some areas that we might be able to use some telescopes in. We would need to investigate that further, but we feel that the interest in creating the observatory mentioned earlier will compensate for this loss. Refreshments should be available as a coffee bar about five minutes walk from the Lindup building. Finer details will need to be worked out as we get closer to them to meeting again and we'll keep you informed. Oh, did I mention that the use of the university facility is free? So that's a good side to it as well. The future. Well, I think that I've covered about as far as I dare with crystal ball gazing at the moment. And I hope that you share the excitement that we've got for better times ahead. And finally, of course, I'm going to thank the membership. Without you, the support for the club is brilliant. It wouldn't exist. The club would not exist. Your attendance at meetings and outside events is very much appreciated. And the fact that their numbers are so strong can hopefully be interpreted that we're doing something right. So here endeth my lesson. So does anyone have any questions that they would like to um, ask? You can know, unmute your microphones or you can type it in at the bottom there. Can I say something, please, Anna? Oh, of course you can, Glenn. I'd just like to say thank you very much to the committee, to yourself, Jerry, and and all of the committee for doing such a sterling job. And I, I think it's a tribute to you that the membership has continued to grow. So well done. Thank you very much indeed. Here, here. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you ever so much. Because, yeah, we're all volunteers. We're all amateurs. And uh, I think, you know, I feel very proud of the club, as you well should be in a chairperson yourself in the past and uh you know your contribution is also noted so i don't see any questions popping up on the screen so before anyone manages it i'm going to hand over to anne who's going to talk us through the accounts so and hopefully people haven't started peeling off and going to find something more interesting to do for the next five minutes. <laughs> um, this actually, when I was just um, preparing the accounts this year, I was just um, reflecting that this is the 15th set of accounts that uh, I've prepared for HAG, um, given that we've just concluded our 15th season. We didn't have 15 AGMs, um, but we have uh, this, we did actually have concluding meetings, if you like. We were only a handful of people, as Alan said. Um, one of them being Frank, who, and it is lovely, Frank, to have you uh, with us again today, albeit for one night, or maybe more, actually, given we're on, online now. Um, so um, I did send out the, uh, my report last night along with the accounts. Uh, quite understandable that you may not have looked at them yet. Um, Alan, I don't know if you can, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Um, given I don't want to go through the shenanigans of trying to share screens, you might be able to put up the actual spreadsheet. I don't know if you want to do that in the background or if people aren't really that bothered. Um, I shall read through my report though and happy to take questions um, at any point. Well, not at any point, at the end, please. So, um, starting with income this year. So, membership subscriptions. The AGM in May 2019, the membership agreed to keep the annual membership fee at £20 pro rata. And this year, um, I bowed to pressure and we offered the option of paying online. Uh, and gosh, I don't know why I had an issue about doing that in the past, because it was so simple, uh, my end anyway, for reconciling accounts. And actually 60% of the membership took advantage of the ability to pay online. Uh, 
the majority of membership subscriptions were collected at or prior to our first meeting on September 11th, as you would expect. And then we had a steady trickle of members joining month by month through to March 2020. Visitors. In keeping with previous years, it was agreed that visitors would continue to be charged an individual meeting fee of £3.50. Those visitors who are 17 or under are not charged. Average visitor numbers are 17 or were 17 paying adults this year, up significantly from the previous year's average of 10. Uh, and on the actual um, hard copy report, I've actually just listed what the visitor numbers were in the previous couple of years. Banking. We continue to bank with HSBC, who offer many services for free, such as the provision of a checkbook and standing orders. And I also use internet banking and have the use of a business debit card, which is useful at times. Other income we had was that we um, hosted, or The View hosted a Christmas meal for our membership. And we did have 12 members who took us up on that uh, offer and utilised our bank account to pay their money in, which I then paid out to The View. Moving on to expenditure, um, our biggest fee is obviously uh, premises which um, at Panshanger Golf Club, it rose to £65 per month. I think they'd initially uh, suggested to Alan it was going to be nearer £90 per month, but he haggled with them and managed to beat them down to £65 per month. So well done for that, Alan. You saved us uh, quite a few quid last year, uh, which worked out at £650 for the 10 sessions over the year for a two and a half hour charging period. Now, obviously that's quite a sick, oh, well done, well done Alan. <laughs> It's as per magic. You're now going to have to manipulate round it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just going to go. We've talked through the income on the left-hand side of the screen, and now we're going to talk through outgoings, which is I'm just going to take them all uh, column by column. So we've just talked about venue. Uh, then moving on to speakers. As always, we've enjoyed a varied program of speakers who have come from near and far, and this is reflected in the fee or expenses charged, obviously. The average fee was £54, but two of our speakers this year made no charge whatsoever. And a couple of them, we actually pressed on them um, some expenses um, for them. Haggis had three speakers over the course of the year who charged an average of £60. Seven of our speakers took us up on the offer of a meal, which the average cost was £29, and we tend to have it in the view as it is our custom to offer some hospitality, particularly if they've traveled some substantial distance. Moving on to our insurance and membership of the Federation of Astronomical Societies. Uh, we join, uh, or decided to join the FAS once more as they offer uh, a useful publicity service about the society, as well as enabling us to take out public liability insurance at greatly reduced rates. We took this insurance out with the FAS during the year at a cost of £30. And actually, amazingly, the rates with the FAS and the insurance has stayed at the same level for over seven years. So I don't know how they've managed to uh, pull that one off, but there we go. Moving on to advertising and promotion. And we spent more this year on advertising compared to last year, which was or had been unusually low. So we spent £382.64 compared to just over £114 the year before, £239 the year before that, £275 the year before that, and £327 the year before that. This increased investment undoubtedly is the reason, or part of the reason, for our substantially increased visitor numbers this year. Moving on to specific purchases, uh, you can see them itemised there in column W. Um, but the main thing to sort of draw out to you is that we spent uh, some money on a sky watcher and cable uh, at a cost of £103 and a solar mount tripod at £294. Auditor. Roger Clark, I don't know if he's on today or tonight, um, but he kindly volunteered again at last year's AGM to act as auditor for this year's accounts, 
However, owing to COVID-19, I've been unable to get the books to him, for him to order in time for this AGM. So on this occasion, the accounts are unaudited, um, but I will get the books to Roger as soon as I can. So we end this period of accounts with a balance of, a very healthy balance of £2,275.25, which is an increase of £362.89 compared to the same time last year. Yes, if you can um, increase the uh, column sizes there, Alan, it will show. Thank you. And just to say that we keep at least £500 in the account to low for to allow for the excess on our insurance schedule. Um, so it means we have got 1,800 pounds um, float really in the, uh, in the accounts at the moment. Moving on to subscriptions for the next uh, financial year, which will, or sorry, not the next financial year, but for the next year um, programme year, which will start in September. Uh, our membership and visitors numbers have increased this year, which is a clear indication that our club is thriving. Your committee have considered whether to reduce the annual membership this year, but feel that two pounds a session is still very good value for money. Hence, we would like to recommend that the annual membership fees remain at 20 pounds pro rata for adults and free for a young person under 18 years of age. We also propose to keep the visitor meeting fee at £3.50 per meeting. Now, given that we hope to move to the university premises, we are going to be saving a substantial amount this year on premises fees. Um, but we're hoping to build up a bit of a balance so that we can start to do some more exciting things with um, potentially uh, um, uh, some, of the some of the plans that we've got for the future. So that's why we are looking to sort of increase uh, the amount of money that we've got in the bank. So that concludes my report um, and I'm very happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Anne. Any questions? Unmute um, yourself and speak up. Uh, Alan, John here. Okay, John. Yeah, uh, just to c commend the, the Treasurer for a good report there, thank you very much. Uh, I would suggest we keep the fees as is as long as we need to and go upwards, eventually with inflation, because that'll give us a nice pot of money to build at Bayfordbury maybe our own dome <laughs> just a thought yes no, it, it's a good one and um we've deliberately not um built in if you like a savings fund on this one no I understand um, yeah yeah um particularly the way that the university was talking <laughs> as if they might have access to various grants and whatevers but like you say, there might be the icing on the cake which they can't provide that mm. we might be able to. Bear, like, bear in mind, it's a very good value club membership. <laughs> it's, a, it's amazingly cheap. Seriously. The, well, value, the value of the product outweighs the cost <laughs> that you're charging. You can come again. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I'm impressed yeah. with the club, how, they've run, how you all run it and how good value it is and how high standard for the speakers is, a, is tremendous. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Jeff. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to take the screen off now, the spreadsheet, unless anyone wants to quickly chirp in with any questions on it. Okay, it, there should be a link to it with the um, email that was sent round today from the MailChimp one. There are buttons there to press if you want to read it uh, further at some later time, later time. Okay, so we're back in the room. Okay, I don't see any other questions have popped up. So that now takes us to the appointment of officers, members of the management committee. Um, I did ask for volunteers, for people to, to um, send in all their suggestions and offers of help and um, was flooded with nothing. Um, but I would like to say that the present committee have all said that they're very happy to continue working. So my proposal is that we vote everybody in on block. And I guess probably the best way to do that is to use that little um, reactions at the bottom of the screen if you're in favour 
give a thumbs up for it. If you're not in favour, then don't do anything. Just to see who can work their <laughs> screens. You can see that some of you are thinking deeply about this. <laughs> okay. Right, well, I think, um, yeah, it's a shame. They don't have a thumbs down one, do they? <laughs> so I, I think it's fair to say that from what I can see on there, um, there is a majority in favour of doing that. So, okay, committee, you haven't escaped. That then brings us to the appointment of the auditor. I must say, I did like the agenda, the way that um, item seven, there wasn't one. There's an item eight, appointment of the honorary auditor. So um, last year we had the proposal that Roger Clark would be the auditor. So Roger, if you're there, would you be willing to do that once more for us? Um, I'm searching for you. I can say, uh, yeah. oh yes, I got a thumbs up there from Roger. So Roger, you're voted the auditor. So thank you to you and to Babs for all the work to get our accounts nice and straight. That's really kind of you. That then takes us to any other business. So if you have any other business that you would like to ask about, unmute yourself and you can uh, chime in. Deafened by the silence. <laughs> Jerry, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Okay. Yes, actually, something I suppose I should have mentioned as part of, of the program. Um, another measure of our success with our meetings is that for the last year, I have not been sending notices of our meetings to Sky at Night magazine, Astronomy Now, and Popular Astronomy, because of the risk of us becoming overwhelmed at the meetings and being in the weird position of having to turn people away on the door. I mean, back in, I think it was October or November, we had over a hundred people. And uh, the official um, limit for the room is a hundred. Um, I mean, it's a really incredible position to be in. Well, if we are moving to the Lindock building um, at uh, the university, then obviously that changes things entirely. I'm not sure exactly how many that room holds, but it is, um, it is over 200. And so that means uh, we'll be back to putting out notices and telling the wider world about what we do and looking forward to them joining us. I think that's absolutely right, Jerry. Um, my conversations with Diane Cran about the Lindop Room, purely on the grounds of administration, um, she estimates it's 250 seats. There's always one or two broken ones. Um, but you know, she said that the next stage after that is the um, was it the West Berta Auditorium? The one over the other side of the road, that's the only building larger than the one there. But I mean, the good thing about the Lindop building is that it, if it does have a uh, accommodation of 250, so if we have, let's say, a typical attendance of round about 80 people, there should be enough space for social distancing to be safe there, obviously, some of you come as couples or groups and so on, um, would sit together. Uh, but I'm counting that the university will have imposed their own uh, regulations about the numbers of people, the one-way systems that will be needed and so on. Um, realistically, I can't see that we would be safely able to meet for quite a while yet. Our speaker in September, Roger, um, I've communicated with Roger O'Brien. Uh, he's very happy to prepare his talk on, to do it on Zoom. And of 
obviously the people we will line up in the next few months are going to be able to do that or have got to be able to do that just in case situations change. I think it has been really good certainly trying it last time and trying it this time learning as we're going along um, the advantages that we can get by using this system means Air Club can continue and I think that's great. One other point I wanted to make about the Lindop building was the added bonus to the students of the university. There are a number of occasions at Institute of Physics talks where we have um, met some of the students there and they're ever so interested in the astrophysics side of things and the astronomy side and then we say well we meet on the other side of Welling Garden City and they say how do we get there or that's a little bit difficult well if we're down in College Road we're going to be a little bit easier for them to reach as well and that would be a good thing I think to have some extra young people um, come along and join in with us as well so looking forward to those safer times when we can um, carry on meeting together and get a wider audience who knows it might be soon that we'll be asking them for a, an even larger building having said that i must also say it, it's not a promise of the lindop building um, it's more um, a willingness to let us use university accommodation is probably the better way to to word it so if we can't have the lindop building there is the one on the other side of the road is it Prince Edward building I know they had an IOP meeting in there once um, which is just a little bit smaller but you're still looking at accommodation around about 200 people um, as I say they can't promise us anything at the moment because they're busy working out their own routines and um, administration ready for their next academic year but um, as Ben Birmingham said to me he can't see uh, any situation that's going to arise that would mean we couldn't get good accommodation from eight o'clock on the nights we will be wanting it so just read it as the university and we will make sure that on air advertisements and public um, publicity that we will send out to you that we will tell you where the building um, where the meeting is going to be held we will do our best about that <laughs> Do we have any questions anyone wants to ask? Dragon 26 minutes to launch, 15 minutes after launch, it will fly over us here in the UK. Thank you for that, John. Um, don't forget to put the chairs away, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for that one. Um, I think I Before say, you go, Alan, yes, is there a chance that I might add a small comment, please? Of course you can, Frank. Uh, it's been a delight being in your company tonight and all my old mates as well. It's, it seems like only yesterday that I was with you last, but I mean it's two and a, two and a half years gone. And I miss, I miss Hag more than most people will understand. The, the, the nearest groups are not very exciting. And if you have to drive through Somerset at night, they could be on the moon as far as I'm concerned because it's so difficult traveling in the dark. <laughs> but uh, it's a joy to see what you're doing. I wish you every, every success with the expansion. And uh, you know, you and I have spoken about it before, but I think that's really good, very positive. And it's it's good to try this new uh, system of Zoom. I think it's wonderful. And uh, thank you for introducing me to it. <laughs> anyway, all I can say is successful new year. As far as, of course, successful new semester, shall we say. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for asking me to be um, one of you tonight. Thank you very much indeed, Frank. Um, you helped laid the foundations down and I can see thumbs up appearing on the screen saying thank you for all your hard work as well. So without further ado from me, I'd like to say thank you to all of you.